Hi, I'm Ben Pollard and I work here at the Lewis and Clark Stay Historic Site. Today I want to talk about something we've got on display in our gallery and something that a lot of people can connect to because this has to do with food. The expedition had to take a massive amount of food with them. They carried literally tons of food on the expedition with them when they left from Camp River Dubois. They were carrying parched corn and flour and unprocessed corn. They were also taking a lot of salted pork. Also some salted beef. And uh, ideally, you would not use this very often. This is going to supplement your diet for whenever you can't hunt or the weather's bad and you still need to feed your men. You're going to be uh, resorting to salted pork uh, for those uh, tough situations along the expedition. Later on, you may have also heard about the portable soup that Lewis and Clark had with them. That was for real desperation. And we'll probably talk about that at another time. But I want to talk about the salted pork because... It's not only a food source for uh, the expedition on their, ex on their travels. It's also kind of a make-work project for the soldiers here in camp. Captain Clark knew that keeping the soldiers busy would hopefully keep them out of trouble. And so he actually has thousands of pounds of pork shipped up from St. Louis to Camp River de Bois. And he sets a number of the men to chopping them into pieces, packing them into barrels, pouring salt over it, and then heating and boiling this briny solution and pouring it over that, rolling and packing these barrels. They're going to spend uh, weeks packing away this pork uh, in March and April of 1804. This is their food. This is what they're going to rely on. And they do a pretty good job. When the commissary comes by before they leave Camp River de Bois, he only condemns a few of the barrels, so most of them were packed well. So how do you make salted pork? Well, you take a whole bunch of hunks of pork, you layer them within a large barrel. It'll have the metal bands, because that's for holding liquid. And then you're going to layer in different levels of salt and pork. And all this time, while you're packing the barrels, you're going to have a big cast iron pot with salt being added to it as it's boiling to make a really salty brine. That's going to go over the meat as well, filling the barrel. So that uh, will hopefully help kill some of the bacteria on the outside of the meat. The salt will cure it and protect it from other uh, spoilage along the way. Salted pork, or as you can see here, porky, which is how Captain Clark often referred to it, is not very good. They're using that salt, and this is very old pork. They're also mixing in saltpeter or niter, potassium nitrate, uh, something that you see in gunpowder and in meat storage at the time. I wouldn't recommend it now. But this is long-lasting stuff since it's in this liquid brine. The toughest thing about it is cooking with it. You would see a lot of recipes where they recommend washing this stuff before you ever cook it or eat it. Uh, washing it through fresh water, trying to draw out some of that salt, because it's just really hard on your stomach when there's so much salt in the meat. The good thing is, most of the time, salted pork is not being eaten as a, as a side, uh, as its own standalone dish. Instead, it's going getting thrown into the different stews and soups they're making on the travels. So actually, as the, the salt seeps out from the meat, it kind of helps flavor the rest of that stock. It's not terrible, but the men would much rather have fresh meat. And that's why they're always going out and hunting, trying to supplement that diet of cured meats uh, with the fresh stuff. This pork will last them a long time. Like I said, they're carrying over 3,000 pounds of this stuff. And it will actually last them until at least September of 1805. Um, it's on September uh, 3rd of 1805 when John Ordway will write that we eat the last of our salted pork. So that means they're probably out of it. It's lasted over a year and a half uh, from when they packed it in March of 1804 or April of 1804. This is going on a long trip. You have to imagine it's sitting out in the sun on the boats or as they're rearranging the boats. It's in the heat. It's getting rolled around on the river. This stuff was probably not great, but it was keeping them running. Now, I say it's probably done by September of 1805 because uh, they will write in June of 1805 that they cached some of their pork, at least one keg, with the Red Pierrot, where the Marias River meets the Missouri River. So they were trying to get rid of some weight. They knew they were going to have to cross the Rocky Mountains uh, somewhere up the Missouri. And so they didn't want to carry an extra weight. They also wanted some supplies to come back to. So they do cache some pork there. And then in July of 1806, they show back up and they open the cache. And no one talks about any spoiled food. So 
we can uh, assume, I don't know how strongly, that that meat was then being eating, eaten again if it was any good. I'm sure they would use anything that they found along the way, dump anything that they couldn't. So there is a chance that this pork packed in here in the spring of 1804 was being consumed in the summer of 1806. A long-lasting fuel, probably dreaded by the soldiers, but it did keep them running and it kept them alive on this expedition. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, you can check out our other videos on YouTube and Facebook. You can also check us out on our website at camptubois.com. Thanks.